Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Denise, why don't you take over and, and then do kind of an action and introduction? Okay. okay, so get this. Uh, will you show us, I guess, the uh, dogfight you had with the uh, German bomber plane, which that's not quite the right model, but it's close to the So that's the German plane over there, and then that's your plane here, which is a um, yeah. Wildcat. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, <clears throat> well, I told how we'd been looking for this <coughs> bomber for quite a while. We couldn't find it in all the clouds. And, <coughs> and they were <coughs> told us to go on, come on back to the ship. We were heading back and, and uh, everybody was full throttle, and, including me, and I'm falling behind. I couldn't keep up. And um, I kept looking back because I knew that, that there had to be something there if that controller said he had a target. And finally, I, <coughs> I spotted this uh, German bomber. This isn't an exact model of it, but, but um, it's close enough. And he came out from behind a cloud like this, about oh, eight or 10 miles behind us. And uh, I saw him come out from behind the cloud and he went on, on around the, the front of this cloud and, and disappeared behind it again. It was a pretty big cloud. I'd say it was oh, at least a half a mile across. And uh, I tally hoed him, and, and uh, we're, we're out here, maybe 10 miles away, going away from him. And I saw him <coughs> alert tally ho and turned, and, and I announced that he was at 6 o'clock to us. My, my leader turned, and we joined up together. Headed back towards, I pointed out the cloud that the airplane had, that I had seen came out from behind and went behind, went behind again, and so we we went to the left of it this way, and about oh we were maybe six or eight miles away, and and we saw him. He came out from behind the cloud, same place that I'd seen him the first time. And uh, he saw us pretty much the same time we spotted him. And uh, he immediately turned to the left and headed away, away from us. I'll put it out here where we'll they have a little room. And, and actually almost directly away from us. So we, we came up, we were behind him then, going as fast as we could go and barely catching him. And finally, uh, Boyd, my leader, broke off and he went up on the left side of him and I was behind. I, I made a short run in here at, at six o'clock and shooting like heck, but I couldn't tell whether I was getting any hits or not. And finally, I broke off here and to bracket him along with Boyd, who was over on the, the starboard side. And we were, oh, Trying to get up a couple thousand feet above him, or at least a thousand feet. And by the time I was getting into position, Boyd turned in and he made a, a high side run on him, firing, broke off, went back up into the, that position as, as he was breaking off. I'm, I'm rolled in on the same type of run. Came down here about, about like this shooting all the way and, and I got to the back tail end of it and then I, I broke 
down under him like this, went up, and back up into that same position. If you're ready, up here and, maybe and Boyd, you can create a few of your dogs. In the meantime, he had gotten uh, up to his position. Uh, using the two By this time, the bomber was, we'll was smoking quite, quite a bit. You know, it didn't look like he was really, really burning <laughs> badly, but he was putting on an awful lot of black smoke. And, and uh, Boyd came running in on his second run and, and broke off and started to go back up to his perch. I was, in the meantime, had gotten up onto my perch up here on the left. And when Boyd was breaking off, I, I rolled in. Same run that I made the first time, and <coughs> opened fire and and uh, just I was about I wasn't wasn't really down to the end of it. I was about two thirds of the way through the my run when the bomber exploded, just in a huge ball of fire and, and a bunch of little pieces and. Uh, that was that was the end of him. I pulled pulled off, went around the ball of fire, and joined up on on uh, Boyd again. And in the meantime, about then, our other two that were ahead of us when we were heading back toward the ship, the, the flight leader and and his wingman, uh, got there just about the time we we. And they're still the working on your transcripts, they're still typing them up. Uh, that was, uh, that was the end of, of that yeah, one. I put all your stuff online, yeah, like I saved it up to the internet cloud for safety purposes. Tried to join so up. So we're, we're getting it up and there. We're headed we're back toward the Send links out and anyone can look at your whole story, again. hours of it. I have it in a special place. And we just got there. back there and they uh, gave us another vector out in the opposite direction. Exactly. And we'll send Which was more like uh, east. Okay, so this first one was out to the west, and uh, we about 10, 15 miles away from the from the fleet. We ran into just a solid cloud of of rain. It was. Uh, just like a wall, a wall of water, and uh, <clears throat> um, the white leader got up to it, and he turned and paralleled it up to the north, and his wingman followed him, and Boyd followed him. I got up there, and I I looked in into this black cloud, and I saw a shadow of an airplane flying very low and going in the opposite direction. Well, I called Tally Ho and, and uh, told him where it was, what I saw and where it was and, and, uh, and he, he disappeared. <laughs> we all piled in and, and I took up a heading which I thought was about what he was on, the enemy was on. <coughs> I got in, it was in, the, in this rainstorm, and uh, I, I let down to about 10 feet off the water because maybe I was up 25 feet, I don't know, but I was very low, so I could see the water and, and not run into it, because the visibility with all that rain was, was Almost, almost zero, and headed in this direction of that this other uh, bomber had uh, had taken, and I didn't. And these guys, these other three, came by. I'm full throttle, and I'm, and and they passed me, <laughs> and, and got way ahead of me, and I don't know. Where they where they went, but 
I just kept on my my heading until um, I had I could neither see the bomber nor any of my buddies, and uh, <coughs> I I don't know how long I was on that heading. At least five minutes, I guess, maybe maybe eight or ten. I wasn't timing it. And uh, all of a sudden, out of a, at about my, from my position, at about 11 o'clock, like this, and I'm saying, I'm still right on the deck. And this guy was maybe, maybe 50 feet above me coming at me this way at 11 o'clock. Well, <coughs> when I, <coughs> of course, he's doing about 300 knots and so am I. So um, I saw him in very close range and we passed very quickly. And I didn't, I'm down here just a little below him. I saw him, um, I couldn't have been more than a couple hundred feet when I first, when I saw him, and I was a little blown, and I, I, I just pulled up and shot and went by him like that. I, I hit the airplane, I saw pieces fly off his, his port um, pontoon, which was right below his, his port engine, and where I was trying to hit, I don't know if I hit the engine or not, but I know I almost hit the airplane with my airplane when I, yeah, right after I shot, I'm trying to get get below him, and and I and I turned as fast as I could, turn around and and say he he had to be doing 300 knots. Uh, I was doing about the same, and it, it took me a a long turn, as tight as I could make it. It still took a long, long way around because of my speed. And I finally came up. I was behind him, and he was way out of range, of course, by then. And I just had kept full throttle on. I got down right on the deck, <coughs> trying to get it, using as much altitude as I could to help build up my speed. And then going as fast as I could, I kept chasing him and chasing him, and I wasn't making much progress as far as gaining on him, but I was gaining on him a little bit. And finally, I decided uh, it might be forever before I ever got into what was acceptable range we normally like to shoot at a, at a range of a thousand feet, and uh, I was—I I, I had to be a little, no, at least a quarter of a mile behind him, and so finally I, I pulled pulled up, and I thought, well, I know the guns—the guns will shoot that far, uh, but not on a straight line, so I, I was down, really down below him somewhat, way back here, and I, I pulled up, and I thought, well, I figured the bullet drop normally at a thousand feet is about three feet, and uh, I must be, I must be, uh, maybe half a mile behind him. 